Hey everyone, in this one, we're going to walk you through how to set up a filter for your unusual whales flow feed. Now, I want to preface this video to say that there's no such thing as a one size fits all strategy or filter setup. What I'm going to discuss in this video are the definitions of each key filter, and then I'll build one of the filters out in real time. Again, there is no one size fits all to any of this. You'll have to kind of play around and find what works best for you. Looking at the filters, there are a lot of terms here. I'll try to put some definitions on screen while we build out the filter, but if you are unfamiliar with these terms, please refer to the Unusual Whales FAQ and Glossary to familiarize yourself with them. The terminology in these filters and options in general are very important to understand. Now before I get started in showing how to build a filter, I want to make it clear that this filter is for a building filters example only and isn't necessarily recommended for direct use. We'll have some more filter examples in the description from users of the platform that are more tailored, but this one is for an example only. Now with that said, let's dive right into this. We'll be building this filter in the main flow feed, but the concepts and selections apply to all of the flow feed tools, such as the interval flow, though some filter selections may not be available on every page due to the nature of that specific page. The first filters we've got here at the top are the side of the trade. The side refers to where the price that contract transacted falls between the bid, what someone's willing to pay for a contract, and the ask, what someone's willing to sell the contract for. Do you want to see a flow feed with transactions nearer at the bid with a higher likelihood of being sold than bought? Turn bid on and ask off. In the case of this filter, I'm leaving bid and ask both on. I want to see potential sells and potential buys in this filter but I am going to turn mid and no side off. Mid fills take place in the middle of the bid and ask prices, so there's no sentiment one way or the other toward bought or sold, and it's harder to speculate. No side also includes things like cross trades. I'll flash a definition of cross on screen right here. Oftentimes, mid-fills and cross-trades can be difficult to read or find additional context for. So for this filter, we'll leave them both out. The next section is chain activity. This is where you can choose what percentage of all transactions on the options chains were at the ask, what percentage of the transactions occurred near the bid, and what was the skew percentage across all volume for a single contract toward the bid or toward the ask. You can adjust these however you'd like, but for this filter, I'm gonna leave these blank. Up next, we've got the option type, which is calls and puts, and the equity type. In this filter, I want to see both calls and puts, so I'm not looking for, you know, a directly bearish or directly bullish point of view with this one. I want to see everything in both directions in which they trade. For equity type, we've discussed in the past that ETFs and indices can cause a lot of noise. Those instruments are often used not only for directional trading, but also as hedges to offset potential losses in other positions and myriad other things. They generate seemingly endless options volume sometimes, so for this filter, I don't want that noise. I'm turning ETFs and indices both off here. I'm going to leave stocks and ADRs, ADRs representing non-US companies, on. I want to see all stocks regardless of where those stocks are incorporated. Directly below that, we have an expiration date selector. I'm going to leave this blank because I want to see everything, all expiration dates from weeklies to long dated contracts in this filter. But if you're looking for specific contracts for specific expirations, you can select those here. But we'll go ahead and leave that one blank. Now we'll get into the nitty gritty. Now, as a reminder, if you're unfamiliar with any of these terms, please check the Unusual Whales FAQ and Glossary. 
Now, first up here is premium. This is a set how much money is transacted on a single order to display in your feed. As is the case with all of these filters except the last two, you can set this within any range of one to infinity. Now, what I want from this specific filter is somewhat smaller orders, but not too small. So I'll set premium to $750 as a minimum, and I'm gonna cap it out as a maximum trade of $25,000. Sometimes a series of orders come in that are likely related, and smaller premium filters can help catch orders in those that may otherwise slip by or go unnoticed. The cap of 25,000 will help weed out massive orders on big companies like Tesla and AMD who tend to have large option transaction volume and expensive contracts. Size refers to how many contracts were in the order. I'm setting this to a minimum of five with no maximum cap. The reason I've picked five is that I'm not interested for this filter specifically in paying $750 a piece per contract. And since our premium is set to a minimum of $750, if our size is set to one, those are gonna come through. Spot, I will also leave blank because that would filter out way too much flow. Days to expiration, I'll leave blank because just like our expiration dates, I want to see all expiries for this filter. Volume and open interest I'll leave blank because for this filter, I don't want to restrict the feed to only chains with a set amount of volume or open interest. However, I will set the volume to open interest ratio category to two. This means that any options chains that show up in my feed will have two times more volume than open interest. I'm not searching for any specific market caps either, so I'll leave this blank. But in whatever filter you're building, you can definitely set this to say, so for example, if you wanna set the maximum market cap to one billion, you'll type one billion into this field and now no companies with more than one billion in market cap will show up in your feed. But like I said, we'll leave this blank. Stock and strike I'll also leave blank for this filter because I don't want to limit my feed to just one option strike range or just one stock price. I'm not concerned with the bid-ask spread range either. Again, you can further fine-tune your feed with these to limit the results to a specific spread range, but we won't for this one. For out of the money percent, I don't necessarily want to see a ton of at the money contracts for this filter. I'm going to set this to 5% by typing 0 0.05 into the first field. This means that if a stock is trading at $100 per share, only contracts that are at least 5% out of the money, meaning strikes with $95 or lower for puts or $105 or higher for that $100 per share stock. Earnings reports I'll also leave blank. While earnings plays can be risky, I do still want to see them in this filter, but I don't want to limit the feed to only stocks with upcoming earnings. I want both stocks with upcoming earnings and not. So this one will leave blank. And remember, you can adjust any of these filters as you see fit. Is this not restrictive enough? Let's go ahead and up the premium to 2500 and that'll further remove some of the flow from your feed. Under the Others section, we get some more blanket filters. Volume greater than open interest will display only options chains whose volume is higher than the open interest. Size greater than open interest will display flow where the size of an individual order is larger than the current open interest. So the size of a single trade greater than open interest. Opening trades will only show trades whose size is greater than the sum of both the daily volume prior to that order and the existing open interest. This is different from size greater than open interest because prior to the order where size was greater than open interest, there could have been a thousand volume on a contract that day. 
With only 250 open interests as an example, an order of 300 contracts would be greater than open interest, but not necessarily an opening trade because that 300 contracts could hypothetically be a closing transaction from that 1,000 total daily volume that transacted prior to the order. Exclude deep in the money will remove options flow for contracts that are negative 20% in the money. So if a stock is trading at $100 per share, this will exclude the $80 call contracts and the $120 put contracts and everything even further out of the money than those. Sometimes deep in the money transactions can include arbitrage and speculating on that is a headache and nigh impossible. So again, I'm going to exclude deep in the money on this filter. Out of the money only will display all strikes above and below the current trading price of the stock and at the money contracts won't be included. I'll leave this off because like I said earlier, for this filter, while we're fine tuning it to weed some noise out, I do want it to catch everything. Multi-leg only will display only transactions involved in multi-leg trades and single leg will do the opposite. I'm gonna leave both of these sliders off because I wanna see both individual contract transactions and spreads and possible rolls into new positions from old ones. Today's trades only will remove any historical flow from the feed when searching. I'll leave this off, but this filter is broad enough that we won't really see anything other than today's flow in this feed anyway, unless we specifically filter for tickers, specific contracts, etc. The hide expired will remove any historical contracts whose expiration date has passed. I generally turn this slider on unless I'm specifically looking for historical flow or for potential prior roles of positions. So I'll go ahead and turn that slider on. Show canceled or modified. I'm gonna leave this slider off and only look at canceled or modified flow when it happens to a contract I'm already following. Canceled and modified transactions will appear in the feed with a red strike through across the order like this one I've just put on screen. Below that are some additional filters where you can limit your feed to only display certain sectors, certain industries, exchanges, and trade codes. But like I said, I want this feed to catch a lot of stuff. I don't want it to be too noisy to pay attention to, but I want it to catch most everything that meets my interests for this filter. Now what you can do after you've set this filter up is you can save this filter as a custom filter. just like that and then you'll click the check mark and boom you've got a new custom filter and there you have it you've built your first flow filter now like i said at the beginning these filters can get as specific or as broad as you'd like just know that the flow feed will reflect what you've chosen if no flow meets your filters the flow will tell you with a message in a blank feed the more restrictive your filters are the less flow will fill your feed I hope this helped out everyone. Stay on the lookout for more Unusual Whales platform tutorials on the way.